Hello, in this video, we're gonna go through the first example of lesson 9-3, which is all about polar and rectangular forms of equations. The essential questions that we'll answer in this question are how do you convert between polar and rectangular coordinates, and how do you convert between polar and rectangular equations? In our first example, we're gonna be looking at how to switch between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates, and then in example two, we'll go the opposite direction from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. In order to do this example, we're going to need to remember our unit circle. So I would recommend that you take out your unit circle and that you use it. I personally don't have my unit circle memorized, but you can kind of generate it if you just know your basics about 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. I know we talked about this at the very beginning of the chapter, but it might be nice just to squeeze this like in the margin of your nine three notes as a reminder. So in our unit circle, the signs of the X and Y can be determined just by what quadrant you're in. But if you just remember like the ratios here, so I'm sketching out, this is gonna be my 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's probably not perfectly to scale, but whatever. All right, so the short side across from the 30 degree angle is gonna be half the hypotenuse. Since the hypotenuse is one, the short side is one half. And then the longer side is going to always be root 3 over 2. In your other special triangle, we have the 45, 45, 90s. This one's a little easier because in the 45, 45, 90 triangles, both legs are congruent. The hypotenuse, again, is 1 because we're in our unit circle. And then both legs are root 2 over 2. So recall the coordinates of a point P, X, Y, corresponding to an angle theta on a unit circle with radius 1 can be written in terms of theta as the point is at the ordered pair cosine theta, sine of theta, because in our unit circle, the cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, but the adjacent and the hypotenuse are going to correspond with the x value and the r value, the radius. And since we're in a unit circle here, r is one. So the cosine of theta corresponds with the x value. And similarly, the sine of theta corresponds with the y value. Now, if we let r take on any real value, we can write a point p, x, y in terms of both r and theta. We just can't replace the r with one like we can for the unit circle. So if the cosine of theta is equal to x divided by r, then x is just r times the cosine of theta. All I did there was multiply each side by r. Similarly, if the sine of theta is equal to y divided by r, then y is equal to r sine of theta. So if we let the polar axis and the pole in the polar coordinate system correspond with the positive x-axis and the origin in the rectangular coordinate system respectively, we now have a means for converting polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. And here's our key concept for that. If P has polar coordinates R theta, then rectangular coordinates X, Y of P are given by X equals R cosine theta and Y equals R sine theta. That is, the ordered pair xy will correspond to r cosine theta and r sine of theta. So that is going to be what allows us to switch between the two forms. Given a polar coordinate with r and theta, we can sub them into the formulas x equal r cosine theta and y equals r sine of theta to find the coordinates in a rectangular coordinate system. All of the values that we're gonna be looking at are going to correspond with values on your unit circle. So just knowing those basic things about the 45, 45, 90 and 30, 60, 90 triangles will be helpful to help us get the exact answers. Let's go ahead and try example one now. So here we are given a point four and then pi over 6, so that corresponds with the r theta. In this problem, the r is 4, and the theta is pi over 6. 
and we want to find the rectangular coordinates for that point. So to do that, we're going to use the formulas that we just put in our key concept box. Let's start with the x coordinate. x is going to be equal to r times the cosine of theta. And in this problem, x will be 4 times the cosine of pi over 6. Now here's pi over 6, and pi over 6 corresponds with a 30 degree angle. So thinking of like your 30, 60, 90, the cosine is going to correspond with your x values. So if this was a unit circle, so my actual point, I guess I should mark it, the point P has a radius of 4 and it's pi over 6. So here's my point P. But if I just kind of visualize my unit circle, the value of cosine of pi over 6, well, we're just getting kind of this little triangle right here. So I know that's super small. But the across from the 30 is the short side. So this side is 1 half. And then the longer side is root 3 over 2. So I know that the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So we'll go 4 times root 3 over 2. And then when we simplify that, 4 divided by 2 can be 2. So then we'll just go x is 2 root 3. I'm going to do exact and approximate coordinates. So 2 root 3 is the exact coordinate. If we type that into a calculator and round it to the nearest hundredth, it ends up being 3.46. Let's now do the same with the y value. y, remember, is just r times the sine of theta. And here r is 4 and theta is pi over 6. Going back to my little triangle that I sketched in, the sine corresponds with the y value. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So y is just 4 times 1 half, which is 2. So no rounding needed. Now we have everything we need to write the rectangular coordinates. So I'm going to put those right over here. So for the rectangular coordinates of the point that we started off with, the x value was 2 or 3, and the y value was 2. Or if we do the approximate value, we'd have 3.46, and then y doesn't need to be rounded, it's exactly two. Now let's just look and see, does this make sense? So this isn't like part of your answer, you don't have to sketch it, but I think it's a great idea to sketch it. So in rectangular form, if I wanna go to like 3.46, so roughly 3.52, let's see, one, two, three, there's four, so three and a half, and then up two, that would put us like right about here. And that certainly looks uh, really similar to what I have here with my point in the polar grid. It's in quadrant one. It's definitely closer to the x-axis than it is to the y-axis. And if I were to connect that, it does appear to be about a 30 degree angle. For this next example, we want to find the rectangular coordinates for the point Q at negative 2 and 135. So here the R value is negative 2 and the theta value is 135 degrees. If you're going to use your graphing calculator for this problem, make sure that you switch it into degree mode. Now I know my chart here is in radians. So I just filled in the degree symbols there and 135 degrees is right in the middle between 90 and 180. So it's 45 degrees away from that horizontal axis. So 135 degrees is going to be right here. Now, if I was along um, this side of it, that'd be positive 135 or positive radius is over there. Since R is negative, we actually need to extend this in the opposite direction. So negative two for R is actually gonna be on that dotted line that I've extended from the 135 so, and then two away from the pole. So we're gonna be right here for point Q. Notice that in rectangular coordinates, we're in quadrant four. It has a positive X value and a negative Y value. So that's what I expect once I switch it to rectangular form. Let's go ahead and use our equations. So X is just R cosine of theta. And here that would be X equals negative two times the cosine of 135 degrees. 
Now this makes a 45 degree angle with the polar axis. And in a 45, 45, 90 triangle in the unit circle, we know that both legs are root two over two. So I'm actually gonna move that 45 out of my way a little bit. And if this was like my, my unit circle, here's a radius of one, this would be root two over two. And then the other leg is also root two over two, but since my X is negative, it's gonna be negative over here as well. So the cosine being the X value of that um, triangle there in the unit circle, the value of cosine 135 is negative root two over two. So I'm gonna go negative two times negative root two over two. The negative times the negative makes a positive two. The two divided by two cancels out, makes a one. So X is gonna end up just equaling the square root of two which is approximately 1.41. We can do the same thing now to get the y coordinate of our point. y will be r times the sine of theta. So that's negative two times the sine of 135 degrees. Sine corresponds with the y value and in 135 degrees on the unit circle, y is positive. So I'm gonna do the positive root two over two. And then when we multiply that out, the two over two cancels. So y is just negative root two. And if you were to put this in your calculator, like if you're questioning yourself on your unit circle stuff, if you type in negative two sine of 135 and you're in degree mode, you're gonna get that negative 1.41, which corresponds with root two. So you can always kind of check your guesses if you're not 100% sure about your unit circle. So now we have our answer, and I'm just gonna write that as an ordered pair. So in rectangular coordinates for exact coordinates, we would have x is root two and y is negative root two. And if we round that, that would be approximately 1.41 and negative 1.41. So we have it in rectangular form. I'm just gonna add a little sketch here. The sketch is not required. Like when you do your assignment, you don't have to do the sketch, but I think it's a nice way to double check your answer and make sure that it makes sense. So X is 1.41, Y is negative 1.41. So that would put us like right about, probably right around there. And that looks really similar to what we have on our polar grid. So my answer makes sense. Here's one final example, and here we have the point V at 3, negative 120. Now, positive 120 is going to be right here. So again, this is in radians. I'm just going to add the degree. Positive 120 is right there. Well, negative 120 is just going to be that reflected across the polar axis. So we're going to be right here that's negative 120 degrees, and then the R value is three. So that would put point V right there. Let's go ahead and convert that now to rectangular form. We have R equal three and theta equals negative 120. Again, if you use your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode. X is just R cosine theta, so I'm gonna go straight to it, so that's three cosine of negative 120 degrees. And when we do that for cosine, so I know that like with the polar axis, I guess, this is making a 60 degree angle. So this is gonna be my long side, root three over two on my unit circle. And then my short side, one half is over here. Well, cosine corresponds with the X and then we do have a negative X and a negative y down there at the negative 120. You can see x and y are both negative. So cosine of negative 120 is negative half. So I have three times negative one half. Multiply that out and we get x equals negative three over two or negative 1.5. Next, y will be equal to three times the sine of negative 120 degrees. And the sine of negative 120 degrees is the y value on our unit circle. So there we go, negative root three over two. So three times negative root three over two. 
Simplify that out and we get y equals negative three root three divided by two. I do wanna get the decimal approximation of that, so I'm gonna type that into my calculator. And when I do that and round to two decimals, it's about negative 2.60. So now we have our solution. Exact coordinates would be negative three over two for X and negative three root three over two for Y. And then for the rounded ones, we would go approximately negative 1.5 and negative 2.60. And then again, if I sketch that, this part's totally optional, but it's great just to make sure that your answer makes sense. So negative one and a half and then negative 2.6 would be right about there. That looks pretty comparable to the point that I graphed on my polar grid. So this concludes example one. Thanks for watching, bye. I'm not going to talk through the guided practice problems in this video, but I will post the answers and then if you want to try them on your own, you can see if you can get these answers as well. Alright, there are your solutions if you decide to try those on your own.